I want to just review several of the things that we've talked about in this house this year as a prophetic word from the Lord. The very beginning of this year, uh, the beginning of the Hebraic year of 5780, if you'll go to that next slide, Simon, we talked about it being the decade of the dynamo in Hebrew, 5780. Um, we're now in 5781, but we actually started this whole new Hebraic decade, which is the decade of the mouth. Hello. Okay. And the decade of pay, 5780, 80 means pay. Um, and I woke up one morning and the Lord said, it's the decade of the dynamo. And a dynamo is like a generator that produces energy that provides electric current that gives you electricity. So if you have a hurricane and you lose your power, you can hook up a generator and you can actually power your house through that generator or through that dynamo. Well, the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, go back to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father because you're going to receive a dynamo. You're going to receive dunamis, a power generator inside of you, and you're going to need it in this next decade. He didn't actually say that, but that's what he was saying. So we've got to learn how to, how to hear what God is saying without God saying it. How many have learned though? sometimes you've got to just pray in the Holy Ghost? Um, our friend Tim Sheets, who is Dutch Sheets' brother, one day he was praying for some of the stuff that was going on in the nation, and he was trying to pray. He was trying to get the right words. He was, he was kind of struggling to pray what he was sensing, and he heard the Holy Spirit kind of sneak up inside of him and say, why don't you just let me do it? <laughs> Guess what? Sometimes in 2020, we've just had to let God do the praying, right? It's like, God, I don't even know how to pray. God, I don't even know how to position ourselves right now. So the Holy Ghost is saying, sometimes you just need to let me do it. It doesn't mean we don't pray. It doesn't mean we don't use our own words or our own language. But sometimes we've got to let that dynamo of the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost be stirred up inside of us. I want to encourage you that every morning, Monday through Friday, Tom and Faye Velez um, are leading prayer from 8.30 to 9.30 on our Vision Church Facebook page. So if you'd like to jump in, Avis is there and Larry and different ones are there actually in person. But you can actually jump in from wherever you are and you can pray into tongues with them for an hour, okay? And it's a great spiritual discipline that I want to encourage you that we're still in this decade of the dynamo and we're going to need the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't do this on our own. We can't even pray the right prayers on our own. We need the Holy Ghost to come down and pray, to, pray through us and pray the right way, amen? How many believe that God's always got a plan? How many know that sometimes we don't even know what that plan is, but the Holy Ghost is always there ready to pray through us to pray his plan into purpose, right? And so it's the decade of the dynamo. Put up the next picture, Simon. Do you remember this one that, we, that the Lord said? There's your white stone. How many of you still have your white stone? Okay. For those that weren't here, at the beginning of last year, the Lord gave me a vision where I saw Jesus putting a white stone into the hands of believers. And he would walk up, he walked up to me and I was standing shoulder to shoulder and he walked up to me and he put a white stone in my hand, closed my hand over it and kind of nodded his head like, we've got this. Do you remember me telling you this in January last year? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm bringing a prophetic perspective on what the Lord said to us, okay? I knew that this actually comes out of Revelation chapter two, verse 17 where Jesus, the, the angel of the Lord, was prophesying to the church at Pergamon, and he said, um, to him who overcomes, I will give you to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give you a white stone with a name written on it that only he knows. The white stone of the overcomer. And we talked all about what that meant. But I will say this, is that what Jesus was doing at that moment was he was prophesying to us about 2020. I didn't see a virus coming. I'm a prophet, and I didn't see a virus coming. But what did I see? I saw Jesus saying, we've got this. See, we've got to learn sometimes prophetically how to read between the lines. When God is saying, I'm giving you the stone of an overcomer, <laughs> you know what he's really saying? Here it comes. You're going to have something to overcome. Buckle up. And how many had to buckle up a few times this year? How many had to take that white stone a few times this year and be reminded that Jesus said, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. 
How many know that in the middle of this year, Jesus has said that God has said that there's a reset that is taking place. God's breaking old cycles. God's bringing us into a new season. And I tell you that that's what God's been doing. And in the midst of all the chaos and all the, uh, all the calamity that's been in the earth, Jesus knew ahead of time what was coming. A couple of prophets talked about it. Chuck Pierce prophesied about a strange virus uh, hitting the whole earth. He prophesied that in September the year before. Uh, but nobody knew how to pray into that. Sometimes prophets speak something and it's just a little single line of something. But nobody really knows how to pray into that. But when Jesus put a white stone of the overcomer in our hands, I knew it was like, okay, what's heading? What's heading our way? What's coming? Jesus said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Amen. I'm just reminding us, these are the, the prophecies that we need to war with. How about this next one? The time of the super bloom. Come on. Uh, Penny and Mike Vogley gave me a candle for Christmas, right? And it said, bloom, the name of the candle was bloom and prosper. <laughs> bloom and prosper. And, you know, just as a sign to us that this was part of the word of the Lord, remember that in February of this year, I know it's hard to remember back to February of this year, but there was a sign to us about a super bloom. Now, remember what a super bloom is, is when seeds blow across a desert or blow across a barren place and the, the land is so dry, the seed doesn't take root. But it goes and it lands on the ground. It finds its way into the cracks and crevices of a desert place. And the seed actually goes down and gets into the earth and actually lays there dormant many times for as long as 10, 12, 15 years until something happens that comes and agitates the soil and wakes up the seed. Has there been anything agitating that has happened in 2020? See, I'm teaching you that when God gives us these fabulous words, we've got to learn to read between the lines. We've got to hear the fact that God was saying, there's something that's coming to agitate your soil this year. But in the midst of agitation, I've given you a promise that I'm going to wake up the dormant seed and I'm going to begin to bring some things to life in you. I'm going to begin to bring some things to life in my people. I'm going to begin to bring some things to life in nations that are going to begin to turn the world upside down. Amen? Because what happens in a super bloom and what happened in February this year is that the region around the Dead Sea in Israel, which is one of the driest, most arid places on earth, actually for the first time in known history, experienced a super bloom. If the Dead Sea can blossom and bloom like a rose, like Isaiah 35 said, let me tell you, God can bring a super bloom out of the most difficult, trying circumstances that we go through. Does this mean that we don't go through stuff? No, it means that we've got to hear the word of the Lord. And we've got to war a warfare with the prophecies that God has given to us to position us to know how to move forward. I want to tell you that in this year of economic shutdowns, in this year of of craziness. I mean, we've probably got a third of the people here that we had at the beginning of the year, and we bless those that need to stay home. And we've actually asked some people just saying, it's probably not safe for you to be out here. And we've asked them to stay home. Guess what? In the midst of this, we haven't diminished as a congregation. We've actually expanded as a congregation. We've got several thousand people that come and that watch our nightly communion. If you're not on our nightly communion, seven o'clock every night, Apostle Tom and I are leading communion and people are joining us from all over the world they're not just joining us from communion they're joining our church come on they're contacting us saying how can we be part of your church our church has actually expanded during this season how we know God said crazy increase God said a super bloom in the midst of this crazy year we've had in this congregation look around this room we've had 21 people 21 families buy new homes in this crazy year. We've had people that have reported to us that their businesses have broken records this year. 
We've had people report to us that in the middle of this year, they're breaking, they're breaking through financially and they're breaking and they're coming out of debt. They're paying off debts. Let me tell you, if your super bloom hasn't happened yet, this word does not expire on December the 31st. We're in a super bloom season and we've got to keep ourselves in position, warring with the prophetic words, warring with the word of the Lord. I want just you to re be in remembrance constantly that God has given us great and precious promises and when we mix our faith with them, then we see things change in spectacular ways. Amen? Put up the next slide, Simon, because I forgot what was next. Okay. America shall be saved. How many know this came as a prophetic word um, to, to Dutch sheets through a dream that somebody had? Or an angel uh, came out of a meeting that Dutch was conducting in the Trump Hotel in uh, Washington, D.C., and an angel came out of that meeting with a scroll tucked under his arm. He walked uh, up um, uh, the street that goes to the White House. I forget which one it is. Huh? It's, is, is that what connects Trump Hotel to Constitution Avenue? Yeah, one of those, okay? One of those holy sounding name streets, okay? But anyway, they walked, they walked into the Capitol and went up into a joint meeting of the Senate and the house and the angel walked up to the podium just like we see at the state of the union address the angel walked up to the podium unrolled a scroll and announced america shall be saved america shall be saved america shall be saved and he rolled up the scroll and he walked out. I'm telling you, this is a prophetic word for the church. And we've got to war a warfare with this prophetic word that America shall be saved. Amen. America is a covenant land. We're recovenanting ourselves back to God. And I just want to encourage you, stay in that mindset. Stay in that place of prayer. And when craziness is breaking out, you've got to stay focused on what the word of the Lord has said because God has declared America shall be saved. Say that with me. America shall be saved. Amen. So many other prophetic words. So that's why we encourage you, be online with us, be in church with us, be remembered the things that God is, is releasing, not just through our ministry, but through other ministries that are out there. Let's stand and let's war with the prophecies. Stand on the promises and war with the prophecies. Amen. How many of you have some personal prophecies that you recall, but you maybe haven't been doing anything with them? Ooh, I just felt conviction all over me. Okay. We've got to war with those prophecies. They don't just automatically come to pass. We've got to war with them. We've got to work with them. We've got to work with God in the process of fulfillment. Amen.